right, it's time for the Jockstrap Sports MMA Podcast. All right, welcome to the MMA Jockstrap Sports Podcast, UFC on ESPN 10, Dos Anjos versus Lee, or UFC Rochester. Actually, I have this. Let me pull this up. I'm Justin. This is Adam. What's going on, guys? Yeah, UFC Dos Anjos versus Lee, also known as UFC Fight Night 152, or UFC on ESPN 10. Um... Yeah, so we're just going to kind of, should we just jump into it? I think we should just jump into it. And Let's then, do it. And then we'll talk about um, the last fight, the UFC uh, pay-per-view. It was Rose against Ajanje. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Bellator 221 I'll talk a little bit about. That'd be great. Uh, main event is Rafael Dos Anjos against Kevin Lee. Um, both of these guys are UFC vets. Uh, Dos Anjos went up a... Actually, both of them are going up a weight class. I believe both of them were fighting 155, and now they're both at 170. So that's pretty cool. It's a five-round fight. Dos Anjos is 28-11. and 11, uh, Five TKO, nine submission, 14 decisions. Kevin Lee is 17-4, and four, two KO, eight submission, seven decisions. I go back and forth on this a lot. I don't know, though. Uh, for some reason, I keep landing an RDA to win. Um... RDA does have more losses, Rafael Dos Anjos, that is, uh, and Kevin Lee is probably, like, on paper, who should win, but I don't know, um, I mean, RDA, uh, it would be, it would be a wrestler going against RDA, I don't know, though, I, you know, I, th- I think he was, he did, did RDA beat, uh, Eddie Alvarez, I know he beat, um, Anthony Pettis, but, Wow, and now the computer just decides like not to go very fast. All right, um, perfect, so, perfect timing. I know, right? It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not even showing me his. Uh... Here they are. Okay, so he lost to Usman and Co- Kobe Covington. He beat. He lost to Eddie Alvarez. Okay. Oh man, because uh, I don't know. Lee will. I mean, he probably be a similar fight. Like, uh, shoot, I mean, he lost to Tony Ferguson, Alan Quinta, very high level fighters. Um, uh, I, I guess I'll go with Kevin Lee. Decision. Going Kevin Lee. Tiny bit of an underdog. Minus one ten versus RDA. Minus one twenty. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. It's going to be a close one. Anyway, the next fight, I believe you have some news about. Yeah, it just right. came out, uh, what was it, last night. Yeah. Uh, Neil Magny tested positive for banned substance dihydroxy LGD4033. Yeah, what's that? Which I've come to find out is a... Selective androgen receptor modulator, huh. which treats conditions like muscle wasting and things of that sort. Wow. Well, that's... So, huh. Probably probably real unfortunate for him. You know, it's one of those things that I'm sure he didn't necessarily know he was taking. Because, I mean, these guys are on so many supplements that, you know, you miss one little thing and, and, and there you go, you're out. It's true, um, and you, you really have to, uh, you really have to, um, geez, my brain, you, you really have to trust the supplement companies, too, because those are... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's all messed up. It's all jacked up. I, I feel like they're a little bit too strict right now, but then again, I, I'm cool with the guys just taking roids anyway, so... Yeah, let's make, yeah. Let's make things interesting, you know? Yeah, I agree. There are some organizations that are kind of saying that. They're like, wink, wink, naughty, nodding, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so now the fight is uh, Vicente Luque. So the news was Vicente Luque was going to fight a different welterweight, but then the other welterweight didn't pan out or whatever. So on March 28th, Neil Magny signed the deal, and then he popped hot for whatever that substance was. Then uh, Vicente Luque, um, May 13th which was last night. Uh, that's when he, he popped hot and had to go out. Now, uh, Derek Krantz is the, 
is the guy that inked the deal really short within a week thing he's out of a lfa promotion um he's 24 and 10 something tells me vicente luque is gonna beat this guy inside distance like pretty easily yeah you know i think it's 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 tough one for vicente luque to be you know having been training to go up against uh you know the fighting yeah. style of neil magny yeah it's a different and then have to have to kind of change it up yeah yeah at the flip of a switch you know it's going to be different but i'd agree with you i think vicente luque still takes it yeah uh you know changing your game plan two times it's not not ideal but vicente luque has been on a tear lately and he's been looking really good in there so i got him winning next one antonio carlos jr or junior against ian heinrich uh is antonio carlos jr is his his nickname no it's not never mind there's someone that <laughs> never mind maybe his nickname is that i'm not sure Shoe well, now face? I want to hear it. Yeah, shoe face. I don't. I don't know. I'm shoe face. Sure. Yeah, I have no idea. He's uh, anyway. So he is. Uh, he's ten and two. Ian Heinrich is twelve and one. Uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. is eight subs, two decisions. Ian Heinrich, uh, four KO, two submissions. Um, and this is probably an underdog. I think I'm going to take Ian Heinrich to win. Yeah, your computer was being slow before. My computer is no, no, being computer, slow now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I tried to look up who Shoe Face is. Yeah, I can look it it's up. It's kind of an interesting nickname. Yeah, it is. I mean, but, uh, it might be because this one isn't. Uh, it, it's it's just a different. Uh, <laughs> now I'm looking it up. You said you're taking Ian Heinrich. Yeah, Hein-, it is. Hein- His nickname Hein-ish? is Shoe Face. Yeah, Ian Heinrich, a big underdog at a plus one sixty. Yeah, um, so his nickname is Shoeface. <laughs> Antonio Carlos Jr.? Yeah, I knew it. Okay. There we go. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just, I mean, he lost to Daniel Kelly. He's good, though. They're both good. I mean, they're both really good fighters. That's actually a really good match. But, all right, next fight. Megan Anderson against Felicia Spencer. Felicia Spencer. Bye, Felicia. Sorry, I was just trying to make sure I said Felicia correctly. Um, it's so stupid. It's low hanging fruit. It's so dumb. Uh, Megan Anderson's nine and three, five KO, two submission, two decisions. Felicia Spencer, Spencer is uh, six and zero, oh, one KO, three submission, two decisions. Megan Anderson's six foot tall. Felicia Felicia Spencer is five six. I think this is Felicia's uh, first UFC fight. I'm not sure. Megan Anderson fought a few times. She lost in the UFC too. Yeah, this is hers. She was Invicta is where she was coming out of. She has some submission wins. Um, Megan Anderson is not good at people that can hold her down. But Megan Anderson fought some really tough competition. Holly Holm, Kat Sangano. I'm picking Megan Anderson. I can't not. You know, just basing off of uh, the fact that she's six foot tall and seems like a beast she's a beast i'm gonna agree with you yeah but uh she is the favorite at minus minus 155 yeah yeah i figured it would kind of be like that um i mean there's a very good chance she's gonna get held down but there's a if it, if they're striking it's gonna she's gonna have the huge advantage oh yeah absolutely yeah there's there's no and she is good really good at striking um all right next fight i feel like this is the most lopsided fight in the whole in the whole thing oh there goes my my cord thing. All right. That's Charles Oliveira. It's a lightweight against Nick Lentz. Charles Oliveira is 26 and 8. 6 KO, 18 submission, 2 decisions. Nick Lentz is 30 and 9. 11 KO, 8 submission, 11 decisions. Charles Oliveira is going to win this in the first round. Either submission or TKO. Sorry, who'd you say? Charles Oliveira. Oh win. yeah, he's gonna win the first round, either a submission or TKO. Yeah, he's a he's a minus minus three sixty. Yeah, so not a not much opportunity there. No, um, and I lost my spot where I was looking. UFC Fight Night Rochester or 
152, whatever. All right, the next one, there's a debut here. Uh, it's a uh, lightweight. Davy Ramos against Austin Hubbard. Uh, Ramos isn't debuting, it's Austin Hubbard. Uh, Ramos is 9 and 2, 1 TKO, 7 submission, 1 decision. Austin Hubbard's 10 and 2, 4 KO, 2 submission, 4 decisions. Hubbard's uh, first um, UFC fight. Davy Ramos, the Tasmanian devil, has three, uh, four UFC fights. The first one he fought against Sergio Marias. Lost that one decision. The next three he won by a rear naked choke against Chris Gru's monster, uh, Nick Hine and John Gunther. I have him winning this one as well. I got Davy Ramos, man, inside distance. I think he's going to win this. You know, I, I would say very good call. You know, you called that Charles Oliveira fight, uh, you know, pretty lopsided. Yeah. This one is even more lopsided. Yeah. David Ramos at minus 450. Yeah. Agreed. All right, man. And then we get to the next one. And it is uh, women's flyweight, bantamweight. What is this? Let's see here. Bantamweight. Aspen Ladd against... Saja Eubanks and Aspen is seven and zero. Oh. She is undefeated. Five KO, one submission, one decision. Uh, Eubanks is two KO, two decision. Um, Eubanks has only really fought really good competition, though. That's the thing. Um, she fought Roxanne Mataferi twice and beat her twice. That was actually her last win in 2018, uh, November 2018. And uh, Aspen Lab fought in a. Uh, October 2018 and beat Tanya Evinger. Oh, she, uh, so, okay. This is a rematch. They fought in 2017, January 14th, 2017, and Aspen Ladd won by decision against Saja Eubanks in uh, Invicta. Um, I, I think Aspen Ladd will, will continue to have her, uh, her winning streak go and win by decision. You know, I'd say Vegas, Vegas agrees with you. Yeah. Aspen Ladd coming in minus 300. For sure. Uh, next one, lightweight Desmond Green against uh, Charles Jordanian. The hometown kid. Here you go. Yeah. Raised in Rochester. Went to high school in Rochester. Wrestled at University of Buffalo. Rochester wants to see this kid win. Yeah, um, he's going against Canadian. Charles is Canadian. Uh, well, even better reason for him to win. Yeah, Desmond Green's twenty-two and eight, six KO, one submission, fifteen decisions. I pecked against him last time against Ross Pearson, and he knocked Ross Pearson out bad too. He looked really good. Uh, Charles is a nine to one, six TKO, three submissions. Um, let's see here. Charles Air Jordanian. Oh, funny. It's like. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Charles Air Jordan. That's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, I like how you said Jordanian. Yeah. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> Just Jor- Jordan? Yeah. You it's added a E in how, at the end. How it's spelled there. You can read these names if you want. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, Charles' first UFC fight. He lost one. And uh, now he's fighting Desmond Green in the UFC. Desmond the Predator Green. Um, I don't know. I've never seen highlights of uh, Charles Jordan or anything. He might be really good. I think he is really good. He seems like he's really good. Uh, I mean, I would have to go with Desmond Green, though. It's hometown. Just comes off this big TKO win of Ross Pearson, so yeah, uh, Desmond Green. I think they're they're picking the hometown guy. You know, minus five fifty. Right, man. All right, okay. I don't have much written about these next two. Uh, Walter Waite, Danny Roberts against Michael Pereira. 